In January 2018, the House of Representatives passed the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill. This is the same bill which was passed by the Senate in July 2017, though with slight differences. When harmonized and presented, it would need the assent of the President to become law as stipulated in Nigeria's constitution. But why does Nigeria need this new law for the oil sector? Industry experts believe that this new law will introduce the much-needed reform in the sector, restore transparency, and facilitate a thriving industry that will be beneficial to the overall economy of Nigeria. Under the current law, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC, controls everything in the oil sector under the watchful eyes of the Minister of Petroleum. They are both operators and regulators. The NNPC manages the oil assets owned by government. They negotiate terms with operators. They control the importation of petroleum products into the country and manage the nationwide distribution of these products. They also issue licenses, permits and leases and then set policies and regulations and are paradoxically expected to monitor the sector to enforce these policies. Not only is the scale of what is required massive for a single agency, there is the issue of conflict of interest. A regulator who is also a player in the sector. This obviously gives the NNPC an unfair advantage over the other operators and is seen as a major contributory factor to the systemic corruption in the agency. Various corruption scandals ranging from mismanagement of funds to wastefulness and even allegations of theft have burdened the agency time and time again. In 2011, an audit report published by KPMG revealed that the agency could not account for over $28.5 billion of over-deducted funds in subsidy claims. In 2013, a controversial letter to former President Jonathan from the former Central Bank Governor Sanusi Lamido Sanusi claimed that the NNPC had not remitted to the government over $49 billion proceeds from crude oil sales. International companies like Wilbros Group and ABB Vector Gray have repeatedly admitted to paying bribes worth millions of dollars to NNPC officials in the past. In fact, recently, the EFCC arrested the former NNPC Group Managing Director, Andrew Yakubu, recovering over $9 million worth of cash hidden in one of his properties. All of this has damaged investor confidence. What will be different under this new law? This new law will see the unbundling of the NNPC into five smaller distinct entities with different responsibilities, making it a lot easier to manage, increase transparency and efficiency. These new institutions include the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, overseen by the Minister of Petroleum, who will be responsible for setting overall policy and direction for the industry. Under the new law, the Minister will no longer have the power to grant, renew, amend, extend or revoke any lease or license issued pursuant to the provisions of the Act. However, the law will grant the Minister preemptive rights to all petroleum products in the country in the event of a national emergency. The second agency to be created will be the National Petroleum Regulatory Commission, MPRC. This office will regulate the entire industry. They will enforce the law and ensure operators are complying with the terms and conditions of issued licenses, permits and leases. They will establish the framework for calculating a fair market value of petroleum products and also regulate the supply, distribution, marketing and retail of petroleum products. The commission will be run by a governing board of 11 people who will be appointed by the president subject to the approval of the Senate. The Nigeria Petroleum Assets Management Company will be another entity. This is a commercial institution which will be responsible for managing all the assets currently being held by the NNPC under the production sharing contracts signed with oil companies. However, the shares of the company will be divided among three government organizations. 40% will be held by the Ministry of Petroleum, another 40% held by the Ministry of Finance, while the remaining 20% will be held by the Bureau of Public Enterprise. 
these shareholders will be responsible for appointing the board of directors. This appointment shall be, however, subject to the approval of the president. The fourth separate and distinct entity will be the Nigerian Petroleum Company, NPC. This is another institution created under this law. This company would also manage the assets currently held by the NNPC, which are not part of the production sharing agreements. The nationwide fuel stations managed by the NNPC will probably fall under this category of assets that will be handed over to the Nigerian Petroleum Company. The company's shareholding structure will be exactly the same as that of the Nigeria Petroleum Assets Management, with 40% held by the Ministry of Petroleum, another 40% held by the Ministry of Finance, while the remaining 20% held by the Bureau of Public Enterprise. But after five years of incorporation of the NPC, 10% of its shares will be divested, then in another 10 years, an additional 30% will be divested to the public in a transparent manner. Ultimately, not less than 40% of the NPC shares will be transferred to the private sector under this law. The appointment of and removal of the board of directors of this agency will be subject to the president's approval. Lastly, the Ministry of Petroleum Incorporated will be set up. This entity will be incorporated and will be holding the shares in the successor commercial entities on behalf of the government. Although the bill is not specific here, experts, however, suspect these shares to be the 40% stake held by the Ministry of Petroleum in the Nigerian Petroleum Company and the Nigeria Petroleum Assets Management Company, respectively. The permanent secretary of the Ministry of Petroleum will be responsible for signing any document that would need any signature in the corporation. The bill would also see the establishment of two more ancillary institutions, the Nigerian Petroleum Liability Management Company, which will inherit all the debts and liability of the NNPC and pensions paid by the DPR. Although this company will be given 12 months to come up with a plan to settle all its liabilities before it is liquidated. The Petroleum Equalization Fund, established under this law, will place a 5% levy on petroleum products sold in the country. Funds generated by this fund will be used for infrastructural development. Why should Nigerians care about a new petroleum industry bill? The answer is simple, money. About $210 billion annually to be precise. And also jobs, lots of them, and new industries and products. Now let me explain. You see, many potential investors have stayed away from investing in the Nigeria oil sector because of the uncertainty of how Nigeria wishes to govern the sector. Other countries such as Ghana and Angola, with relatively more stable industry, have attracted more investors. The Nigerian Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, NATI, in 2015, calculated that Nigeria is losing about $120 billion worth of foreign investments annually due to regulatory uncertainty in the sector. A new law will mean clarity, which will boost investor confidence, meaning more companies, meaning more and more jobs for more Nigerians. Importantly, the law obligates foreign companies working in Nigeria to employ only Nigerian workers, except where the required expertise is not to be found in the country. Under those circumstances, companies can bring in foreign staff, but with a provision that a Nigerian understudy that foreign expatriate throughout the duration of his contract so that expertise is built locally. The introduction of this new law would also see the expansion of our petrochemical industry and make us big players in the production of fertilizers, plastics, cosmetics, synthetic textiles, detergents, asphalts, and many more. The unbundling of an overburdened NNPC would also mean efficiency, transparency, and less corruption in the system, leading to increased revenue for the federal government. So there will be more money for capital development in the country. The passage of the PIGB is just the first step to reforming the oil sector in Nigeria. The initial draft of the Petroleum Industry Bill was deemed too complex and complicated. 
deliberating on the bill was taking too long. So, the lawmakers decided to break up the bill into four parts, making it easier for deliberations. The idea is to get the bills passed one by one. While the PIGB now awaits assent by the president, three other bills which make up the complete petroleum industry bill now need to be passed by the National Assembly. These bills include the Petroleum Host Communities Bill, which seeks to establish a fund for the development of petroleum host communities under the direction and control of the communities themselves. This would hopefully curb the Niger Delta restiveness which has taken a toll on the sector. The Nigeria Industry Petroleum Administration Bill will see the establishment of a government agency which will provide the legal framework on how licenses, permits and leases are administered. The bill, when passed into law, will enforce strict compliance to health, safety and environmental standards. The sponsors of this bill say that gas flaring will be prohibited under this law. The Petroleum Industry Fiscal Bill will see the implementation of legal instruments to collect all revenues such as rents, royalties and tax on behalf of the federal government. This bill will replace the existing laws that currently govern the all revenue collection. Sponsors of this bill say that the current laws are outdated and fraught with so many issues like lack of clarity, dual tax issues, high percentage profit in taxes, issues that kept investors away. Proponents of the bill have argued that this bill will be beneficial to Nigerians, setting the pace for a vibrant and diversified economy. Imagine if you can, a Nigeria that does not export fuel, but has enough for its needs and even exports the excess. Same for the fertilizer we need for agriculture, plastics, synthetic materials, a cleaned up Niger Delta, the end of gas flaring, millions of new jobs and skills. In short, a fully functional oil and gas sector that is strong, vibrant and beneficial to Nigeria and Nigerians and not just a handful of people. This is a promise of the Petroleum Industry Bill once it becomes law.